Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to do this in three parts, and if you're watching this, this is part three. Doing this in three parts because my phone has turned off three different times <laughs> in the middle of doing it. A uh, little late for the expl the update, but uh, on that explanation. But yeah, I wanted to show you the uh, the first couple of prints of the King Room right out of the box. I got them running production prints. Um, I needed needed them to do it and wanted to test and see what they can do. So uh, these are literally the first prints on these. So I've only had them up and running for a couple of hours. I want to show you a couple other things between them, the differences between them, and uh, you, you know get get my opinion slash review on it. I'm hearing one of my other printers over here make some noise. It's working on a unique print. <clears throat> this is quite a big one here. Okay, it's still looking okay, but it's being a little tricky with those supports there. I'm printing some nylon that big, and uh, that can be tricky at times. Okay, we got an AC unit back there if you're wondering what the hell that is, and, and the tube's going back there, but let's, we'll start with the KPS. Um, so obviously it's not an I structure, it's just an L structure, I guess if that's a, a structure name, or maybe T if it's all the way up. That's what I'll call it for now, though. But um, it's on the same linear rails, uh, or not linear, I, I don't know what you call these exactly. I'll have to get the exact name for it, but you're on the same nice bearing wheels that, that, are, that are very smooth, very accurate, and uh, won't wear out over time. Uh, same extruder and everything, the only difference is really the size and the fact that it's not an eye style. Uh, one other difference is without having the eye, they didn't have room to fit their integrated uh, PSU. So if you get a KP5S, you're going to have a, uh, a loose power supply that you get to sit next to uh, next to your printer. So um, other than that, one of the little differences I've noticed is uh, look at how close that part fan is. We can see that that part fan is nearly touching the print, but if we look on this one, and sorry if there's any wind noise, this is right. You can see there's plenty plenty of room on this one so I ended up checking all of the other ones and some of these have plenty of room that one's got what looks like enough and some of these just barely are clearing the uh, the part itself so my suspicion is that they have probably like a 30 and a 35 millimeter throat and the 35 was needed to be used but somehow you know, a shorter throat got put in there. And I'm sure as well that these are some of their uh, prototyped printers. Um, and, and I only suspect that because one of them that I got had two different steppers than the whole rest of the fleet. And that one in particular had a whole lot of dust, maybe not a whole lot, but had a fair amount of dust. What I would say is at least a week or two's, maybe a month or two's worth of, you know, if you're in a clean environment, probably a month or two's worth of dust built up on the inside. Now, everything else was clean with it, um, but that's something that you just, you know, an experienced person would notice, oh, hey, this is a used printer. It's not like it was fired up and printed one print. It at least had that fan running for, um, you know, days, if not weeks. Um, now, as far as the print quality goes, uh, let's look here. We're printing some easy nylon. Very first print. I'm busting out the easy nylon. This is uh, the back of the electrical outlet that's in some of my other videos. Um, I think I had the temp a little bit high. I've noticed there can be a little bit of temperature swings between the two printers, but I'm hearing a little bit of popping. And popping generally means that you're boiling the uh, filament. But uh, yeah, it's moving pretty quick. It's looking pretty decent. We got a little bit of stringiness there. But um, all of my prints so far have had some of that with this filament and with PETG. Um, you know, this one, this one's looking good too. Uh, this one down here got a little more stringy than, than I was wanting. Um, I'm not sure what the difference is on the settings with this one, but I'm gonna, I'll have to investigate the settings on this one a little bit more because it's got a nice couple blobs on it and, uh, and that's no good. We don't want that. Um, this one's printing a flexible larynx, and my goodness, is that filament not pretty? I promise you it's not doing it justice. 
in this video but it's sparkling and it looks really cool I didn't think it would sparkle but uh, yeah this will be a Larynx and uh, we're doing a uh, what is this another engine block business card holder um, so that's interesting I wanted to note too that this screen had gone blank and now has returned from its blank status so I have one other printer that does that not this brand so it didn't surprise me when I had seen it. It's like, oh, I've seen this before. But it does surprise me that it came back on because that other printer has never come back on after that. So that's neat. Um, and if you didn't notice, this thing is blinking all around. So that's one thing that uh, will need to be fixed. Now this could be that just the screen is touching a part of this maybe. I don't know. It, you know, it, it seems to be whenever I touch something a little bit after it'll start going nuts. It might be a firmware issue. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll probably get a firmware update with these um, after too long, but that's something. Now, it hasn't otherwise affected anything. It's just like it's kind of selecting things, but it doesn't actually touch anything. So the printer is still currently functioning and printing, um, but that is something to address. Uh, what else was there? Oh, yes, this was a major one. If we look at the bed here, now this is after... I've done my best to kind of straighten it out. We can see that, you know, this, it's a little hard to tell in the video, but this thing is all cattywonka. When I got it, they were all like depressed down. You know, the level was way off. And it's like, you know what, if a new person gets this printer and these things are all bent, they're not gonna understand how to properly bend it and then adjust and get the level. Now the other ones, the difference is, is they put a nice little channel here. So this stays really firm, and I even tested it. I tried bending one of these. You're not gonna bend one of those, but this one, they didn't put a little channel in. They just left it real thin. You know, I understand it for the money, for the weight, but um, but that did cost them, and I am requesting that uh, all of the new future ones get a increased uh, stiffness in their B, in their, their what do you call this, your Y frame or your bed frame, um, because that's unacceptable in my opinion. If, if it can come bent and I can bend it by hand, that's no good. Uh, now King Rune is really good about updating and, and changing things, especially on the fly, so I would expect that any past, you know, this day, and, and I'll keep, keep a video um, update on what they say, but I am literally taking photos and videos of every little problem here and sending it directly to the manufacturer so so they are aware of these and are very thankful for me being able to test them and give them feedback so um so that's good because these guys will end up getting it fixed oh one other thing is on this guy um so this is the kp5l now they're all running this same little wheel system here now this particular block just does not have enough adjustment room to get this wheel far enough this way so that it will stay sturdy on this thing. When we put it on here, I'll show you. Um, let's see. That's kind of hard to do without looking at it. Okay, so we can see that it's mounted right see how that wobbles that's at max adjustment so if you ever get a printer that does that do not even attempt to print with it like that that's worthless um, now this being the specific system uh, it might be on Amazon but I've never seen it this might be their design or something like that I do like it but um, yeah I'm gonna request that I get a replacement one of these sent by air ASAP because uh, you know I, I can't I can't have that that bed needs to be tight now every other one has had a tight bed so that's great um, any other issues complaints concerns other than maybe just a little bit of the quality control um, because I noticed what was it uh, there was a, only two missing bolts that I found out of all of it um, a couple things not tight down um, what was it? There was there was one other thing, but but otherwise, oh, like this this belt here, like like this belt. If you run it all the way over when it mounts, if it's you know 
I had on one of these, this was just a little too high up. I had to lower it down just a little bit, you know. That's just kind of like a quality control thing, and that's something that anybody can fix. And I, you know, I highly encourage and would put the responsibility on the user to tune their printer and make sure it's good. You know, if you get something like this, you have to contact the manufacturer. You know, you're not going to find a replacement part like this around here. And they're generally going to be really cool about this because this is just a part. They can send you the part and this is going to be super easy to replace. It's literally one, two, three, four screws here. I'll undo the bed and then it's four screws on the back side and I'll have access to just place that out, put a new one in, and we're good to go. Um, so no big deal there. Uh, the Oh, the other thing I requested is their, their Z-switch here is great, and, and I'm fine with it, but let's just put another one over here. You know, if we put another one over here, you're going to get a perfect level every time. So so I really feel like that's a good opportunity there to, uh, to add another level. And then one other thing was on the back side here. You've got such a nice spot here, and even power and ground, literally from the motherboard, you could put a 12 volt power supply, right? Yeah, a, literally an LED strip, and it could go through this wire. I mean, I don't, I don't see why you don't put a nice LED right there. That would just be great. The price would be, you know, completely, you know, increase the price $5, I'll, I'll pay that for, for some LEDs. Um, and it sure won't cost that per printer. So that's one thing that, that I'm excited about. Um, otherwise, I do like it. I think a, a firmware update could possibly make the UI a little bit cleaner, um, but it's otherwise pretty good. Um, I do like, you know, so here's what the screen looks like. It's actually, I think it finished its print. Um, so it's fun. Yeah, look, it's, I guess it's cooling down and this is still a part of the print. But, uh, yeah, so this is what it looks like, basically. Then you have settings, your fan, about, motors. Um, it says it has Wi-Fi. Does it have... I haven't pressed this. To my knowledge, it does not have Wi-Fi. Yeah, I don't think it does. So I don't think there's a Wi-Fi module in here, but that might be something in the future that they'll update. They at least have it in the firmware, which is good. So you have, look at this, so, so we can mess with jerk and accelerations and speed settings. So this is really good in my opinion to, uh, to have because you can really tune in your printer and get it really, really clean here with, uh, with some of these settings. So this will be a future, a future video. I'll just go nothing but the configuration and how to get the most awesome uh, setup. So here's board information, firmware information, um, we got language, okay so in tools you have your regular preheat which is a nice preheat, you got your bed preheat and close it out and then uh, we have a nice leveling, it's it's you know the one two three four five point leveling just like on the KP3S which is good. We can go in and out on extrusion if you just want to move some. If you need to load or unload filament, you've got an option for that too. That's nice. I generally manually do it myself. Uh, we can home it. There's a button for more. So here's some pre, uh, pre-bed pre configurations for preheating. You can just hit more, hit one of those, and, and it's a one, one dot instead of turning it up to a specific temperature. So those are really nice. Um, otherwise, I'm really liking... The printer, I love the price. The price of these guys is, is fantastic. I'm gonna have to look back through, and because I'm a reseller, and I'll be, these will be some of the first ones resold to people. Um, if I remember right, I think this guy's like 200, and I'm probably gonna offer it 250. Um, assembled like this and tuned in, and I'm only gonna offer it like this from the start because I want to make sure that I catch any manufacturer defects before someone buys one out of the box and has some problems. I'd rather fix those problems and know that you go home with a good working printer than, uh, than, than you know, you coming back to me and saying, hey, why doesn't this work or that work? And, you know, if I can show you, hey, that printer printed that right there and it's got less than four or five prints on it, then so be it. And if someone absolutely needs to have a new one, then, uh, you know, I am willing to sell it in the box. It'll come with that simple disclaimer but um, you'll have to wait till a new one gets here. If you want to buy one of these, they are for sale right now. You can hit me up. Um, 
3D print everything.net. This one over here, here's the KP5L. So we can see that it's just a little bit bigger. It doesn't take up too much more of a footprint. Um, I'm printing some PETG on this one. And it's doing okay. There's some Cura settings I need to change. Some temperature settings. It's peeled up just a little bit right there. Probably could have had it just a little closer to the bed, but um, yeah, I mean these are that's literally the very first print off of it, so it's at least successful. Got some overture on that one. Um, ignore the dirty ender. <laughs> but uh, yeah, these things look great. I'm super excited about it. That's actually our brand filament, the uh, the red there. So if you, if you need any PLA. Uh, US made filament I would love 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 to hook it up and um, yeah I look forward to doing a continuation video on this maybe there'll be a part four or I'll just call it something else but um, yeah my opinion on them these are great if you want to buy one from us awesome you want to buy a fleet of them from us awesome if you would like to just buy them on Amazon whenever they're available or from their website great to my knowledge right now they still have not listed this online they're only available to resellers like me and for this exact reason because the first batch just went out and uh, we're all giving it a good test and they're gonna fix it a little bit upgrade it get the next batch out so I fully expect that when I say hey I'm ready to place another order which is probably gonna be this week um, I'm gonna expect them I won't be ordering any of those if they have that bed, and I'm going to make that very clear. So, but, uh, but yeah, what's neat with this company too is, is if I buy more than a hundred of these, they'll brand it for me. They'll reprint the king, the, the bed, they'll reprint stickers for the front, the firmware. They'll give me all of that um, included in buying a hundred of them, So as well as any changes. So if I wanted them to change the hot end, to a new style or to you know do something else they'll make those changes for me and uh, sell that brand printer to me so so I could have it rebranded um, that would be super cool I would love to make some changes and, and do that so one day I'll have enough money for that um, obviously not right now but here's the setup guys as we can see the floor is clean so part three the floor is clean <laughs> Because uh, the other videos uh, from earlier today, you definitely got to see the mess that that it was. But we got a couple new king rooms there. There's a KP3s's. But um, yeah, guys, thanks for uh, watching. And if you if you stayed this long, I appreciate the like and subscribe. I know you're a real trooper if uh, you literally watch the end of the video like this. So uh, thumbs up, and I'll see you in the next one.